2021 has been a challenging year for many reasons, but an exceptional year for the Home Assistant project with so many releases jam-packed full of new features for us to enjoy. So now as we move towards the end of the year, I thought it would be fun to say goodbye to 2021 as we wind down and move into 2022 by going back and recapping my favourite Home Assistant features from this year, speak about why I like them so much and what I use them for. So let's count down from 7 to 1 and start with one that may have flown under the radar for a lot of you but is such a great feature, trigger IDs. By the way, hope you had a good Christmas, hope Santa brought you some new smart home tech to enjoy and play with, and let's go. Trigger IDs was introduced in the July release, and on the surface it may seem like a simple addition, and they are, but I think they are a super important and really handy feature to have. Trigger IDs allows you to figure out which device or sensor triggered an automation, and then reference that trigger later on in an action. This is incredibly useful for being able to combine multiple automations into one or for when you need to do something a bit more complex. And it's particularly powerful when combined with something like the choose action. Overall, this is a minor feature visually when compared to some others, but it unlocks a lot more potential. Number six was one that I was personally really glad to see, and that was the startup visibility feature introduced in the release of May. Then this was another really nice, simple, yet powerful feature that I use so often. It essentially allows you to go in and check which integrations and features are causing your home assistant to start up slowly. And this is really useful for A, figuring out why your restart times are so slow, but because of that, it can often lead you onto possible mistakes you have made, whether that be a typo or a configuration error or something else. And the startup visibility tool is definitely one to keep an eye on. Now we come into some of the bigger features from the year, and this is where I had a really hard time picking between them. But number five is another powerful troubleshooting tool, the automation and script debugging feature, which first landed in the April release. This feature allows you to visualize and do a deep dive on why your automations and scripts aren't running quite the way you want them to or expect them to with a full timeline and breakdown of each step in the process. This feature, even to this day, I feel is really underutilized for many of you out there and it makes it so simple to see why your automation isn't behaving correctly or giving you the right result. If you haven't started using the automation and script debugger yet, then you are really missing out on a cool feature there. I've covered this on a previous video on a full guide on how to use it, which you can check out up here. Number four isn't perhaps what you would call a feature per se, but the Home Assistant analytics are just as important to have as any of these features. Analytics were introduced in the April update as an opt-in way of sharing statistics with the Home Assistant project if you wanted to. And since then, analytics have been opted in by over 115,000 of you from literally all over the world. And this data has been used to show manufacturers that the Home Assistant project cannot be ignored. And it also allows the developers to prioritize bugs where the impact could be massive. It's also useful for people like me to see which versions of Home Assistant are most popular so that we can tailor our content and guides to our audience. And I just generally get a kick out of checking in there from time to time to see how many installs there are, as well as what hardware everyone is using. Number three was a later addition to the year coming sneaking in in the November update. And it's one I have wanted for literally years now, the icon picker. Seems like such a small thing that shouldn't make that much of a difference, but working with icons was a bit tedious in the past. Having to visit the material design website, searching for the one you wanted, copying the code, forgetting the code, copying the code again, and pasting it into your configuration only to find you got the syntax wrong and then you have to start the whole process again. But with the new icon picker, you can literally browse and search through all of the available icons to quickly find the one you want and select it from the list. It will even show you the icons that have aliases for the word that you're searching for, which is so cool. And that's why the icon picker has made it to number three on my list. Coming in at number two is a feature that first made its debut all the way back in February of 2021, Z-Wave JS. When I was first doing the prep for this video and I saw that Z-Wave JS 
was released this year. That kind of blew my mind a bit. I legit thought that it came out last year because of how many cool things has happened this year, not just in Home Assistant itself, but across all of the related projects like ESP Home, ESP Web Tools, Home Assistant Amber, WLED, Tasmota, all of these cool projects. So yeah, I was genuinely surprised that Z-Wave JS came out this year. It feels like something that we just always had. Now, admittedly, I've only used Z-Wave JS a little bit and only started using it recently, but the work that has been put into Z-Wave JS is really incredible and makes it so easy to use, especially with another feature that was released this year, USB discovery, and now really anyone can get up and running with Z-Wave very easily. In the past, there was a lot of fragmentation with different integrations available for Z-Wave, but it looks like Z-Wave JS is here to stay for the long haul and was a super welcome addition to those of you using Z-Wave. The native integration into Home Assistant without having to visit a different web UI or anything like that is a big step in the right direction, in my opinion, and everything works beautifully. Finally, we arrive at my favorite feature of Home Assistant from 2021, and that was the energy management feature from the August release, which was an absolutely huge new feature, and that brought in the ability to monitor the energy consumption from multiple different data sources in your smart home. Energy management can track power usage from individual devices like smart plugs and switches, all the way up to solar panels, gas, and even grid consumption. And this also came along with a brand new pre-configured dashboard and some fancy animations, allowing you to see daily, weekly, and even yearly trends at a glance, and even has the added bonus of keeping track of energy prices along the way. Configuration was really easy too. We again have a full video covering it up here, and it made it super simple for anyone to get started. All in all, an absolutely incredible feature, which I've never really seen done anywhere else before, and one that I know is loved by lots of you guys out there for good reason. So there we go, that is a look back at all of the cool, exciting things that happened in the Home Assistant world in 2021. And looking back at this, it really makes me excited to see what is going to happen and come next in 2022. Who knows what we could be talking about in a year's time. But that is what going to do it from me for this video. And for this year, not only has it been an incredible year for the Home Assistant project, but an incredible year for the channel. All thanks to you guys. Thank you all for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and just generally being so amazing over the last year. I definitely couldn't have done it without all of the amazing support. And of course, we will be back very shortly with tons more content for you in 2022. Hope you guys have a great new year. And I will not only see you in the next video, but also in the next year. Bye. <laughs>